If you are one of my fans that lives in the United States or Europe or Canada, you're probably go going through the most horrible time of the year right now that is called winter. So in order to stay mentally sane and survive this winter, I recorded some summery summer videos for y'all. So we can reminisce and remember this amazing time of the year when everything is blooming. Now since recently I've been very interested in a certain question. Which plants in our natural environment are the most supportive for pollinators? I'm Bart Coppens, an online entomologist. I'm very interested in insects, in particular butterflies and moths, but also all other flying insects that benefit from flowers. And I found something really cool today. I found some beautiful and fragrant yellow flowers. And they seem to be attracting a lot of butterflies here. It smells really nice and it seems to be a plant from the daisy family. It is known as British Yellowhead or Meadow Fleabane. And the nectar-rich flowers are attracting dozens of butterflies. Now a lot of people in this world seem to complain that oh no, the butterflies are not doing well. The bees are not doing well. But how many people are willing to learn about the things that we actually need to conserve in order to protect these species in our natural environment. Well, I'm one of those people and if you are watching this channel, you are one of these people as well because you are out here learning with me. The pollinator crisis is a complex problem. It's a complex issue that's not just about pesticides or climate change or intensive land use or the fact that we are not conserving the right plants and environments that insects need to thrive. It's about all of these things. People call it a death by a thousand cuts. Insects, butterflies, bees, all the stuff that we need for a healthy planet is uh, suffering right now because of our policies. So on this channel I really like to investigate like which flowers and I'm, I'm very interested in pollination and flowers. Which flowers are really beneficial for winged little friends? In my country, the Netherlands, the peacock butterfly is a, a common species. It looks beautiful. It's one of the most colorful butterflies in my country and it's also one of the most common. Lots of people get used to their beauty because they are so common, but I still love to see them every time. And these flowers are just attracting a huge amount of butterflies right now. Interestingly guys, small species of butterfly don't seem to be interested in this flower at all. It's mostly the bigger species, namely nymphalids. I see a lot of peacock butterflies, but I also see some of the painted ladies. Here she is. Vanessa Cardui or the Painted Lady, a very common species in my country. They have a kind of frantic feeding pattern. They don't stay on a flower for as long as peacock butterflies do. Different species of butterflies have different personalities. And I've definitely noticed that some species spend more time on a flower than others. The Painted Lady is kind of ADHD. They hop from flower to flower, but peacocks, they can stay on one flower for a long time if they like it. And they spend a long, time, a long time drinking. This one seems to have a very slight wing deformity. Can you see it? It's interesting to note that this also happens in nature. Sometimes in captivity you get butterflies and moths with ooh, the wind. With small deformities on their wings. And nature is more rare because, uh, well, those tend to not survive. So you don't see them. Well, the wind is not really helping at the moment. See that crooked hind wing? So this one had a kind of had a small issue when it came out of its pupa. Sorry for the bad footage. It's the wind. It's just hard. These flowers are shaking back and forth because of the wind gusts. Whites are also present. I like uh, cabbage whites. 
lots of people don't like them because they're common and not very colorful but I think they're charismatic oh a bee just chased it away it's kind of hard to show this on camera because they are small but I hope you guys are able to see how many butterflies there are in this field a lot a crazy amount so guys since recently I've been obsessed with a new subject and that's finding out which plants attract the most butterflies and other pollinating insects. If you're wondering why I'm starting to film them, it's because I want to promote these plants a little bit. A lot of people like butterflies and moths, but they don't understand the natural elements that sustain their favorite creatures. So I'm starting to look and hunt um, for plants in nature that are greatly beneficial for winged little friends and this plant seems to definitely be one of them British yellowhead do you guys know a flower that's really good for butterflies and moths leave it in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about it and don't forget plants are only beneficial when they are left in their native environment use plants native to your country if you live in a diff different country, this is not your cue to plant a lot of British yellowhead. Unless you live somewhere in Europe where it's native. See you in the next one, Skibbity Riz, Ohio. Ah, the wind. So annoying.